Okay. I'm looking today at uh, Sydney petrol prices, a uh, forecasting model. And um, without too much mucking around, I got a really good model. Actually, the hardest part was compiling the data, finding things which were correlated. Um, this is about two years after I did it. I was driving Uber at the time, part time. And I wanted to predict petrol prices because they swing pretty radically in Sydney. And unlike the US, petrol is a significant cost uh, in Europe and Australia. Uh, in Asia, Australasia, Europe, it's significant. It's double or triple the price of America, or even more the price of US gas. Um, so it's significant when you're driving. But anyway, um, I downloaded the headline rate of the Australian dollar uh, up to. Um, I'll just go down and check, see when I, when the last date was. 16th of August 2019. It's about when I gave up driving. Uh, go back up. But the data is good and the model fits and it, it still would. Now that's a headline AUD rate for the day. These are all data. There's 3,922 data points. Um, I'll discuss later. That's a trade weighted index of the exchange rate. Uh, that's just a check on the dates to say they match. Now that's the OPEC oil barrel price for the day and that's the Sydney median house uh, median petrol price. Oh, I'm not sure why there's average or median but it came from a Quango, uh, a quasi or quasi autonomous non-government organisation uh, maintained by the uh, gas petrol industry on uh, fuel prices. Um, I, I have the website saved in my uh, uh, bookmarks folder, but it's not really relevant. Most people won't be from Australia anyway. Um, if anyone from Australia is interested, I'll just leave a comment and I'll try and look it up. Anyway, um, the first model was just simply an ARIMA model on the Sydney prices with the dates. Um, and the second model was a, a multiple linear regression on uh, the AUD, the TWI and OPEC against Sydney prices, the Y variable, the X1, X1, X2, X3. And uh, I did it in Frontline Solver uh, because it's really laborious to do that sort of, it take a long, long time to do that in Excel. Um, it's actually the sort of thing you'd want to do in R, but if you've got Frontline Solver, it's okay. Um, there's a few caveats, but I'll discuss them. Now, the first model I estimated was your Arima. Um, that's your Arima output. No, it was a second Arima model. I estimated one. One is a 1-1 one, one model, that was no good. Then I did a a 2-2 two, two model, uh, two auto regressive, zero integrated, and two moving average. And then I did a, um, was this the, is this the, did it update to the second model? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, that, it did, it did update. So this is a uh, two auto regressive, one integrated, integrated and two moving average uh, to um, one difference two moving average model two two one ordinary difference one difference and uh, yeah it was it was a really good fit it was incredible I mean uh, yeah you didn't need to be a professor of uh, econometrics or um, statistics to get a really good forecast I'm just a a university undergraduate trained quantitative analyst, analyst an econometrician and um, cost accountant and uh, yeah I'm no brilliant strokes but I've had lots of industry experience lots of hard yards in the in the uh, coal face um, not many years in academia um, and the fitted as you can see we won't go through 
it was a really good forecast. We'll just use the charts because they tell the story better. Now it says actual is red. Oh, whoop. Actual is, whoop. oh yeah, we'll go to the end. The actual is red. So the actual last forecast was one, the actual was 129.3 and the uh, forecast was 129.628. Now that's a really good fit. Point three of an error and you can see it's maintained you like you can't even see the red line the forecast just about mimics it all wherever you look like it's really accurate so an arima forecast is a really good forecast i know the australian government has uh published data where they say it's a five day moving average and they change it seven day. it's not i've when i did this initially I looked at all the smoothings and uh, moving average models and I'm afraid Arima is the only one that gives a good forecast. Um, yeah, um, I forgot to say that the, the petrol prices were Sydney. Um, they're not Australia wide, they're just Sydney. Because that's where I drove, that's all I was interested in. And as you can see, there's the um, ACF plot, the um, auto correlation fit plot. And you can see that it is like up, down, up, down. It is, it continues, it continues continuously. It is uh, auto correlated and it is a moving average. And here's the partial. And even when you do it partially, it's still, you can see it's still up, down, up, down. It definitely is correlated and moving average. And uh, that's the ACVF plot. But yeah, it's a really good forecast. Now we'll move on to the regression model. Now the regression model was... Oh, um, the linear regression model, here it is. The, li the linear regression model was the initial model I had a good forecast with until um, I used the uh, frontline solvers XL minor, which is it up here, which has a real lot of good stuff. It's expensive though. For a home, for, for an individual, I use the educational license. Uh, I don't use it as a student. I actually pay the 250 fee, which is quite expensive for an educational license. Now the data I used wasn't even the full data set. It was only 922 data points. But I suppose as a training set, it was enough. It's a good fit. Um, um, the actual data I had was 3,922 data points. But in the educational license, you're restricted to 1,000 variables. Um, uh, if you want to run the 3,922 variables, I recommend using their cloud. This is on an i5, which isn't my i7 machine. It's not running on my i7 machine at the moment. Uh, Windows updated overnight and it's corrupted it. I haven't got time to fix it, so I'm just running it on this machine. Um, hopefully I'll get help from their help desk to fix on my i7 machine. I'm paid for the license, but um, uh, yeah, it, it, it is a really good fit, the regression too. Um, you can see the R squared is 0.91, now that's really good. The adjusted R squared is 0.915. Uh, so yeah, I mean, the arena is even better than that, but um, the R squared is pretty good. Um, the, the, the fit for this uh, there's the ANOVA, uh, the F score, the uh, T statistics, the ANOVA. It's huge. Um, covariance matrix. I won't go into that too much. But, yeah, you know, all I can say is um, you don't have to do a lot of digging to get a good forecast. Now, I'll contrast this to a lot of my videos on uh, share prices, which are not forecastable. Whereas this is really forecastable. This is really easy to really good get really good predictions with this 
with share prices you don't get any predictions like I used Cayman filters structural time series and I used Arima models in my one of my videos and uh, an Arima with a Cayman smoothing and it still did not predict much better than an IE forecast for shares so shares truly are random even though I don't believe in the efficient market hypothesis shares are random for a variety of other reasons I tend to support the um, arbitrage pricing theory and I believe that uh, people taking the, the market quickly takes opportunity of arbitrage quickly seizes on arbitrage opportunities and if you're an economist you know that um, once an arbitrage is discovered it's um, washed out of the system by continually explo exploitation by more and more participants and that's what actually happens with the share market but um, as you can see this is a really good fit too um, uh, is that is that the oh that's the, that's the residuals let's go for the forecast and this is a forecast we we'll just look at the bottom of it um, uh, the forecast was 120 where is it uh, well, I think that's the bounds um, that's a forecast one period ahead uh, the actual forecast was 130 which is slightly more less accurate than the arima forecast but it's still you know, really good um, given that the, it's a median house price that's well within the tolerance of the actual prices well within the actual prices for petrol in sydney at the time and uh it's forecast next day uh, the regression model is interesting combined with the arima because you could use the arima to forecast one period ahead um, and feed that in as a y variable and put it against these to get another forecast um, for the next period you know against the trade weighted index and the uh, AUD and the OPEC oil barrel price but yeah I'll leave it there but as you can see um, forecasting works for some things and not others um, generally because finance is a big issue because people you know are worried about their future and they invest for the future and unfortunately it's not an easy game like predicting petrol or oil or gas um, predicting shares um, there's quite a few things like company profits which are predictable not always but actual share prices are not um, anyway I might sign off here uh, I might just have a quick discussion about uh, there's a fits about this uh, I didn't want to redo the model again and teach you how to do it um, frontline solver has a good YouTube channel and they always have seminars once you um, buy the product or even if you're a student which you can learn to do this stuff um, it has a standard interface I just click so we won't do a model there's a rumor I'll just show you like um, you know you your time variable which is variable one your um, the variable which is petrol prices goes down under selected variable and that's there I just put it up added a difference click advance to get um, uh, fitted values produce forecasts and there's even you, know, you can you can go to the nth degree with this sort of stuff we we'll cancel it now there's you move on to the to the next and there's even more and more things you can do but anyway I'll cancel that it's not difficult and then you just click OK once you want to run it and it gets you your forecast um, and uh, interesting thing about this it's not just that you can you can get the traditional linear programming nonlinear programming uh, turbocharged algorithms with because frontline solver wrote the original solver for Quattro Pro in about 91 then Excel then Lotus got it then Excel by 95 and uh, Excel 95 was the buster it destroyed Quattro Pro 
and Lotus 1, 2, 3, he will be before then. Uh, before Excel, there was Multiplan with um, Microsoft, and then Excel was their big, their big buster. Destroyed Lotus 1, 2, 3, which absolutely controlled the market before then. Um, probably. But uh, yeah, um, that's the data mining. That used to be known as Excel Miner and sold as a separate platform, but it's integrated with a lot now. Analytics Solver has a simulation engine at, for simulating all sorts of things as well as a solver engine. Um, I have had trouble with it. It's very finicky because Microsoft are always updating and it tends to break its links. Uh, the help is pretty helpful, although on the other machine I do have an error which doesn't affect it. It's not related to the error now, but previously I can't get rid of it. I just click it to go away and then it runs. It's, it's really odd. I can't solve that problem, but it doesn't seem to affect its operation. Um, that's the uh, that's the chat for today. Hopefully this hasn't been too long. Otherwise, I might have to edit it. Anyway, take care. Bye.